In this tutorial, what we're going to talk about is something called projection mapping. Uh, projection mapping is something that we can do in After Effects. I'm working in CS6, though this certainly works in Creative Cloud and in many of the uh, earlier versions of After Effects. And essentially what projection mapping does is it lets us use uh, a bit of tricks inside After Effects to give the illusion of depth to a photo. And this helps when we're trying to create some different kinds of camera work, uh, for example, uh, a zoom into a photo. Um, and projection mapping lets us uh, create basically a mock three-dimensional space inside After Effects so that we can uh, get a lot of the same visuals that we would get if we were actually moving a camera through this particular space. I'm working with a photograph. Uh, this works nicely with photographs because photographs usually have more uh, pixels than uh, footage uh, does. You know, the traditional um, footage being filmed at 1920 by 1080 uh, today. Uh, this particular image um, has, uh, yep, yeah, you can see it here. Uh, 5184 by 2912. Uh, so certainly a lot more pixels. Um, and what that means is that as we zoom in, we're not going to lose any of the quality of the image. Uh, but when we're zooming in, uh, we're really just changing the scale. Uh, you can see here I've got the image nested in my uh, composition and we've got it at 38% because it does have more pixels than my uh, than my settings for my composition here, which is again just a 1920 by 1080. And if I uh, increase the scale, we're zooming in on uh, this little girl here. But the, kind of get it back to where it should be. Um, but essentially what's happening is that everything is just coming towards us or going away. When we move a camera through space, the things that are closest to us are going to appear to move faster than the things that are further away. And so what we want to do is make it so that this space between us and the little girl uh, slides quicker uh, as we, or at least looks like it's sliding quicker as we move towards her in the composition. And the way that we're going to do that is by, uh, again, using this uh, projection mapping tool. So now what I'm going to do is to create two white solids that will uh, essentially be the three-dimensional space that we project this image onto. We'll activate our composition here, uh, layer new solid, and it's white and it's composition size. We can change the scale later if we want to. And I'm gonna name this one uh, background. And we'll create a new one. And I'm going to name this one grass. So this will be the one in the foreground. I'm going to make them 3D layers. And now essentially what I want to be able to do is to uh, orient them so that they represent the uh, physical space in this photograph. I'm going to be helped with this uh, by my grid option here. You can find it under the generate. Uh, category of effects and presets or you can just type it into the search there and we'll drop it in on both we'll turn off that top one and drop it on that one too and now that we have the grids in place uh, what we can do is change the orientation so that we have one that's kind of flattening out here and we want that one to be our grass. I'm going to keep the background where it is and we can move this one down a little bit and then I'm going to switch to my uh, side view so that I can pivot this pivoted along that x-axis if I select the or move my mouse over the background one you can see how they're kind of orienting and if we slide this one out just a bit we'll come back to our active camera and so you can kind of see how things are coming together. I'm going to zoom this out a little bit. Uh, maybe we'll go to that 33%. And you can see that uh, this 
intersection of the two grids would be where I would want the uh, dimension of the lawn to stop. And so if we kind of push it up a little bit, I want to have it just about where that little girl is. Um, we'll pull out the width here. We can pull out this width as well. Get just a little bigger. And this doesn't have to be perfect. I guess that's the that's the important thing to <laughs> to kind of think about here. Um, so now that we've got our uh, our grid in place, and you certainly don't have to worry too much about you know how everything is uh, is coming together here, though. And you know the grid lines don't have to line up or or anything like that. The only thing that matters here is just a rough approximation of the locations of the solids. Now what I'm going to do is to create a new camera and we'll just go with a basic 50 millimeter. And I'm going to move that back. I just happen to be a little bit in on my timeline there. I'll come back to the beginning. And I'm going to create a new light. I want that light to be a point light. I'm going to make sure that it's selected to uh, cast shadows and click OK. And you can see some things are starting to change already on my screen. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up my transform properties so I can get my position of the camera. You can see where that is there. I'm going to copy that by command C and open up the position of my light and I'm going to paste those values in so that now the camera and the light are in exactly the same uh, position. And you can see the 960, 540 and then that negative uh, 2666.7 value. Um, if I want to see where things are, we can go back to this custom view and I'll use my spacebar here. Uh, you can see the light and the camera are in the same place here and they're pointing towards my uh, pointing towards my screen. I'm going to go ahead and uh, roll these up for now. Now what I want to do is make an adjustment to my solid so that they'll accept the uh, the lights that are being transmitted onto them. I'm going to turn off my grid effect for each uh, and I'm going to hit AA on the keyboard with uh, first grass selected. You can see that we have light transmission at 0%. We're going to uh, grab onto that and up it to 100%. Uh, we want to make sure that accepts lights is turned off. So you can see that we've got that happening there. So you can see the changes that are being made as we go. And then I want to do the same for my background layer. So light transmission to 100%. And the accepts lights to off. So now we've got our little <laughs> piece up here. So now we've got our projection mapping JPEG and I'm just going to duplicate that. I like having kind of multiple copies of things. We'll turn off that bottom one and I'm going to change the position of this. We'll make it a 3D, but change the position of this so that it is the same as the position of my camera and my light. And so you can see that there. And so now you can see this uh, image is oriented out here instead of behind my behind my solids. Now what I want to do is parent this layer to my camera and parent my light to my camera. I want to orient the uh, Z position of my image so it's just a little bit in front of the camera 
Okay, so now we're going to switch back to my active camera and I'm going to scale down my image as necessary. I'm going to jump into my camera settings. I'm going to turn off depth of field and that will uh, make it so my image is uh, more clear here. And again if we switch back to that view to the side uh, you can see that we have the uh, photo here, very close to the camera and the light, and it is essentially projecting itself onto the grass and the background. So again, I will come to that active camera in the front. So now that I have my solid setup, uh, my light and camera together, and my image basically in front of the camera, what I want to do is go into the uh, properties for my uh, JPEG and I want to make it so that uh, underneath material options and again the keyboard shortcut is AA if I uh, switch this to only and if I switch light transmission to 100% and you can see what's happening uh, there on the screen. Now what I want to do is generate a new camera and this is going to be the camera that actually has motion. Click OK and drop it on. And this is, uh, this is basically your, your setup. Um, we've got a camera here. And this is the camera that we're going to uh, move around. So you can think about some different kinds of options for that. Uh, and and to be honest, the difference for this will, will be fairly subtle. <laughs> so, you know, we go through all of this and then uh, basically the cautionary tale is don't use this uh, to uh, an extreme or else you're going to give away some of your some of your different properties. Now, what you could do is you could create a solid that is in the shape of the little girl here. You could create some solids in the shape of the tree. Um, you could have the uh, grass here so that it wasn't necessarily a flat surface. It was more oriented along the uh, curve here if you wished. But just for simplicity's sake, this is, this is how I'm working. The easier way to see how this is working, again, is to jump to uh, custom view one or three. And so here you can see the uh, projected image on my solid there in the background uh, and my image here of the grass. Now the, uh, the orientation of this uh, particular uh, solid will make a big difference in the way that things are uh, appearing to move as we zoom into the space. Um, and if I want to use my uh, camera orbit tool, I can kind of change things up, though my computer might lag a little bit here having the screen grab and things like that going on. But uh, you can see this is my camera and my light. This is my object, uh, the actual image. And then this is my camera uh, that's actually recording the, the space that we've got set up. And you can kind of see where that, where that window is. 